Okay, we're started. Okay, welcome. Um, I'm Andrea Beam, and I will be doing the first part of the March releases. Um, today, we'll be going through um, payroll, accounting, and inventory. Um, and to let you know, and the, the new ones that weren't, um, wasn't aware of this, we did add a re release recaps down here at the bottom on our SSD meetings and trainings page in the wiki. So um, every month we will put those um, highlights of what has been released for you. And I will be following this um, down doing bug fixes first, improvements, and then new features. So we'll go ahead and get started. And if you have any questions, you can please chat or you can unmute yourself and, um, and ask the question. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna go through is the bug fix. Um, we had a bug for, um, we wanted, they wanted to remove uh, the headers for the report perimeters on the summary page and the employer distribution report. So now when you run that report um, under the employer distribution, that would be under here. <clears throat> so now and when they run it for the summarized report or normal, and when they run that, now the report is going to show with no header perimeters. So now they're just, it's just going to show um, just the, the names. And what you're gonna see is the employee number, name, the pay item code, account code, gross and employer amount. So that is what changed for that report for the summarize and the regular report. On the next one is your sort payment um, detail. So districts were wanting to sorry about that. I'm not sure what that was. Um anyways, yes, see this is Larry. There we go. Okay, got it muted. Um the next one is a sorting payment. Um districts were wanting um on the direct deposit notice. They were um it was um, messed up, like they would have maybe accrued showing first over time, then it was just all over the place on the sorting options, or the sorting of how it was showing on the direct deposit. So they added uh, a way now how the direct deposit is going to sort according to how they are paid. And it also will sort by their, like if they're uh, paid for like three positions, here's an example. So like on the pay report, if the employee was paid three different positions, it's going to sort that way on their direct deposit notice now. So you're going to see their first position, and then you're going to see their second, and then you're going to see their third pay. And then it will list their description. So um, that was a request from a district. So it wasn't all over the place when the districts were looking at it. And then we have a list here of how, how it's going to be sorted. So you're going to start, you have the regular overtime accrued. Um, and so on. So that is how it's going to be sorted on their pay stub accordingly to each position. So, so that was a fix that we um, added. Another, another bug fix was on the W-2 submission. Um, there was a report that uh, when there was no Ohio State tax item, um, the report was failing for the summary report only. And um, this was not affecting the submission file, it was just affecting the submission summary. So that was corrected. The next bug fix was the payroll item detail report. Um, it was excluding um, any error adjustments that districts were adding for employees for the SERS 590 and 690 and then the SERS 590 and 691. So this bug fix will now include that in on the report and also in the report summary. So they so any error adjustments are going to show in the total SERS or if they were a SERS error adjustment in the total SERS pickup. So that has been fixed. The next one is the SERS advanced position report. Um, when they were, a district was running that, they were noticing um, that it was only including, was not including inactive positions. It was just picking up active positions. 
So that bug fix has been um, corrected. So now they're gonna see active and non-active on the positions, um, any positions, but um, the SERS advanced position right will not include deceased or terminated employees. <clears throat> so just a reminder on that. The next bug, um, they wanted an option where if districts wanted to see negative accrued amounts printed on their direct deposits, they wanted that option. So now districts can go to the configuration and under the payment printing configuration, they can this combine accrued and regular wages, um, either if it's checked or not, just depends. So if that box is unchecked and an employee is paid a regular pay amount, but they have a negative accrual, they, they will break that out and it will show that because some um, districts employees were wondering, um, they wanted to see that. But if it's checked, then that payment configuration is going to show it and they're paid a regular and a negative accrued, it's going to combine them all in one. So before and after. The next one is the audit report. Um, there was, this is a bug fix for two districts that noticed what, um, when they were in new contract, they had added a payroll account and then they went ahead and um, deleted the new contract as they had to start over. Um, and it was creating a, and then they were running the audit report and it was creating an error right away, it wouldn't even run. So um, they went ahead and fixed that so um, the districts could get bypass that and um, run the audit report. Um, same thing, earnings register, um, a district notice uh, there was an issue when running earnings report, they were getting an error and was throwing an MPE error at them. So they corrected that and it was because of a payroll item abbreviation issue on imported payments. The next one is the STRS new hire report. Um, we had an error um, when somebody was, a district was trying to run it. It was putting a null in the report if they didn't have a gender entered on the employee screen. So now um, when they add, they corrected that, they decided to add errors for that report also. So now when they're running that, and if a district doesn't have this information entered under employee screen, it's gonna give them an error so they can correct that um, and before they send that on. So the errors have been for the date of birth, if they don't have a gender, in street one, city, state, or postal code. And these are all found on the employee screen. <clears throat> The next one is the custom report recreator. Um, there was a bug uh, from a district that was trying to create a special report for legal names from the employee screen and they were find, running into, um, it was point, putting a null pointer on it, <clears throat> an error. And so that was created. And that was just when they were trying to do the legal name, pulling in the legal name and then the last name and the first name. <clears throat> Any questions on bug fixes before I move on to improvements? Okay. Hey, Andrea. I'm sorry? This is Andrew with WOCO. Hey, I put oh, this, this in the chat. Um, hey, what oh, does that, um, the print, the regular plus accrued versus splitting it out, what does that default to? So like if I was to tell my districts this was an option, what, what, what am I supposed to expect that they're all at right now? Um, I think it's unchecked, I believe. It okay, would have so to check, but should, I think the default it's unchecked, okay. I think. I'm sorry? Okay. It should be split out, should be split, but we they can get rid of that if they want. Correct. Correct. Okay. So Thank if it's you. unchecked, it's going to split them out. And if yeah, they're not wanting wanted, that. Yeah. I just wanted to see where out. it would be at. Yeah. Yeah. I, I That's believe really cool. I think it's the default. I think it's unchecked, but I guess, again, you can check your districts um, there that configuration. Um, but I want to say, I, I believe the default is unchecked. Okay. Thank so, you. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really cool. That's great. Thank you. Great. Great. I, I yeah, I think the districts are going to like, some like to see it broke out and some don't. So, so at least I have that option now. So, okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Andrew. Okay. We'll move on to improvements then. Um, the quarter report. Um, when they're running their quarter report, they were noticing the deduction names were uh, missing. So what they were um, asking is to have on the 
So any payroll item configuration abbreviations uh, for the district's live, what they have listed right now under payroll item, um, that's what the report is going to use. So the deduction name and the deduction items history of the quarter report at the bottom is going to use whatever they have in the payroll item configuration abbreviation field. So if that is blank, then it's going to move over to whatever they have in the configuration for the W-2. So it just depends if they do use just a regular abbreviation field under configuration or if they don't, then it would just default to the W-2 abbreviation. So that was an improvement that was wanted. The next one is the STRS Advanced Configuration. This is a new option. And so uh, this is getting ready for the STRS Advanced that's coming up. Um, they added this under two spots. I'm gonna go ahead and show you that. One spot they added was the organization. And now they shows the submit to STRS. So when they run the STRS Advanced submission and create that, um, it's gonna show the timestamp in the date. So that will show here. Now, if they a district had to back out of advance and start over and they had to um, get out of advance and start over, this timestamp is not gonna change. It's gonna be the original timestamp that they created it. So just a, a reminder on that. And then the second spot of where that was is in the sort of advanced configuration. Under configuration, and under the STRS advanced configuration. So they added that here also. So this is once they run that advance, then that submission timestamp is going to be entered in there. So I think the districts are like that. We had a lot of requests for that. Okay, on to the next one. <clears throat> okay. The earnings report. Oh, excuse me. Got to get down to where I was. Earnings report. Um, the next one was um, they noticed a lot of this is for noticing when they were running the earnings register that the uh, payroll item a description was missing. And a lot of that was due to the imported um, deductions that were coming over. Um, they were not um, showing the descriptions. So that was a request that districts wanted to see that when they're running earnings register for employees that were paid in classic that they want to see those descriptions. So now that has been added. So now when they run the earnings register um, and it's and if it's blank, like for classic, it's going to use the payroll item configuration. So whatever they have in there in the payroll item configuration is what the, what's going to be used. So if they don't have no history in there and then it's going to use the abbreviation from that payroll item configuration. Same thing goes for the classic. <clears throat> um, they did some improvement on performance. Uh, one was for earnings register. Um, they improved that by 65%. The leave projection, um, there's those four reports that are ran under the leave projection. So the account summary was improved by 69%. The account detail, that was improved by 61%. The employee detail, um, they improved the performance for that for 69%. And then the messages only, they improved that by 71%. So hopefully your districts will see an improvement on when they're running that in the time. <clears throat> the next one is employee onboarding. So this is for districts that use the employee onboarding. They added the payroll A item name in the grid. So I'll get out of there and I'll go over here. There we go. So that's the employee onboarding. Oop, log me out, Let's try that again. There we go. All right. So now in the payroll item grid, let's see if I can find them. Here we go. There is request to add the name. So now that has been added. Okay. The next one is allow payroll items to be mass deleted. So this was another option that was requested. So now when they click, they can do mass delete. So the ones they don't need, and if they have five they don't need for an employee, they can select those and just delete. Now, as you see here, when it pops up, you're gonna see the delete five non-required payroll items. And what that means is in the payroll item configuration for each of these, 
if they have it marked as required, like federal, state, they can't delete those. They would have to go, if they want to be, be able to be deletable, then they would have to go into the payroll item configuration and actually um, put that back to non-required. And you can see the ones that are um, blackened out here, those are like non-required ones. But the ones that are in the gray, those you can't delete. Even if you check them and do the delete selected, it won't even delete them. It's just gonna put like, as, you know, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, but it only shows five. And where, again, I'll show you where that is in the payroll item configuration, like under state required. That's where that's coming from, that option. And that's why the Ohio and federal are in that gray out color. Okay. Um, let's see. The next one was under the employee onboarding. So this would be like for um, any drop down box and any of these options here. Um, when they go in, and if anything has a drop down box like here, the type, the it was like cutting off like halfway. So it was only showing like partial, and it was hard for districts to see what they were pulling, what options there were. So now they open the boxes up. So each drop down box is going to show according so it has enough room. So when you go down, it will move the box, and you and so they can at least see. So when they're in the drop down, they can see the full wording of um, what's under, <clears throat> excuse me, what's under type. And again, that's for every drop down option. Okay. Um, that's the end of our improvements. Any questions on any of the improvements? Hi, Andrea, it's Andrew again. Hi, Andrew. Hey, uh, two things, one, Thank you so much for the onboarding updates. Our districts, we have seven using it now, and they were all very happy when I sent that Great. email out. Um, then the other thing is um, we were just checking to see if, like, what we talked about earlier, and it looks like it actually defaults to check to being checked. Oh, it does. Okay, thank you so for it's, checking. It defaults to combine them, and so we're going to send an email out because that's a change, and so people might, you know, because before, right, it broke them out always, and now, and now it's going to default to checking. So we're going to send an email out and be like, "Hey, if you want the old behavior, you got to go do this." But I assume okay. most of them want the new behavior. That's the new behavior, right? That's, yeah, up that's to how the it districts. did it in classic, right? It combined them in classic. Uh, gosh, I can't remember anymore. It, I, it, it, it probably too. did. I think it did. So, so okay. but thank you for checking on that. Yeah, thank you. All right, any other questions? Okay, we'll move on to new features. So the new feature um, is, this was behind the scenes, so there was really nothing that you would be able to see any different. It was a service layer for payee payments, but that was a, a new service, that was a new feature that was added, but again, that's behind the scenes. Um, one that you will be able to see is the print screen. We added it under employee and position. I will show you that. Open it. Um, get here. So under employee, we'll show that one first. If you go in and, and just hit edit, I mean, not necessarily you have to make changes or anything, but if you want to print, print the screen now, this whole screen, um, or if you make changes and save, now you're going to see, come on, there we go. Now you're going to see the auto report and a new button, print screen. And you can run it, and it shows as a PDF. So now they can print this off if they're adding new employees um, and they can print that off and check it with their checklist and make sure they have entered everything in correctly or if they wanna print this out and put it in their uh, employee forwarders, um, they have that option to do that now. But again, it prints the whole entire page of the employee screen. So I think the districts are gonna like that. And the other one was added under position
And the same scenario, if you go in and modify it and you make changes or you don't make changes and you just save it and print screen. Same thing. So they can print this off if they want to keep this in their employee in the employee file or if they want to check it with their checklist of what they just entered for a new employee, they can do that. And I think it'll make it a lot easier for them to make sure nothing was missed. Um, so it lists all their payroll accounts. So they can go in and make sure those are correct when they're entering. So that's, I think they're gonna like that. That's gonna be a nice feature. Okay. On to the next. Okay. The next one was down here. Um, okay, um, this create SO, SOC one for audit job and the district audit job. Um, Pat will be going through that because uh, that is um, um, combined with the use of side of things. So we will go ahead and she's going to show that in uh, more detail. Um, um, when she comes on next. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next. The add new imported property to adjustment journals. Um, there was a request to add a option where um, if it was imported from classic or if it was not imported, if it was something done in redesign. Um, this was something that they wanted um, added. So if they go to adjustments, And as you can see, um, this is, everything is in redesign, but you see this imported box right here. This is on check because this is something I did when I was in redesign making adjustments. So that is on checked. Now, if it was from classic and it was an adjustment coming over from classic and it's a non-modifiable, you cannot, you cannot, districts cannot um, change that. It's one way or another, um, but I wanted to show um, the imported. If it was imported from classic the description, then you're going to see this box checked. And again, if since I did the modifications and um, redesign, you're going to see it unchecked. So again, this field cannot be overridden. Um, we did, they did add it as a field for mass load um, if they wanted to import that in um, when they're using mass load. But again, it's always going to default to um, boss because um, once you're in redesign, um, it's always gonna be FOSS that was imported. So, but again, just wanna let you know that they, they did include it as a field for mass load. Okay, so that is the end of the payroll side of things. Is there any questions or wanna go through something again that was new? Again, I will have this um, document um, in the, in, also loaded under uh, our SSD trainings and such. So that way, if people wanted to look over it, they can I'll put it in our registration. Okay. Then I think I will pass this on to Pat. And it's all yours. Okay. Can you see my USAS releases? Yes. Okay. Sound great. Okay. So we created two audit jobs and they're um, very similar in U USPS as well as USAS. These are going to assist ITCs and districts with submitting these reports to the auditor of state for both the district audit and the SOC 1 audit. So um, once these are created and generated, these files will be zipped and also um, sent securely to the auditor of state um, using the secure file transfer protocol. Um, but first, you got to set it up. So this is, again, similar in both systems. If you go to system configuration under the application configuration, in order to send these files, it's got to be set to the instance type of production and this check marked so that the job execution is enabled. 
So once that is set up, to create these jobs, you would go under the utilities, under the job scheduler. And I'm in USAS, but I'll flip over to USPS2, but they're very similar. You would hit create, sorry. And there's a drop down that you would choose which job type that you want. This one's for the district audit job, and this one's the SOC 1 audit job. Both of them are going to have different reports included in them. And when this job is generated, it's going to be based, it's going to run these reports for the prior fiscal year based on your current posting period. So since it's March 2022, it's going to run the reports or generate these reports for last fiscal year. So you would choose which um, job type that you would want and then um, schedule the cron expression to, to run your report. And then once you submit, the reports will be set up. And let me go over to USPS. And the job type is similar. I'll point out the difference. So the difference is here, whereas USAS says USAS, and then USAS has auditor here for audit, whereas USPS has AOS. That's the only difference. And again, you would schedule the cron expression there. The jobs that are included, um, in USAS, the district audit job is going to include these reports. And we listed, and this is in the wiki in the documentation under the job scheduler. The job type is also listed here. And you see where it says USAS and audit. And then the SOC 1 audit reports are what your the previous audit report bundle included. So those three reports are included in the SOC 1 audit which are also the same reports for the SOC 1 audit as in the USPS documentation and the audit job. So the difference between the two systems is basically the reports that are included in the district audit job and the job type um, details. So, once again, once you click submit, you'll schedule the jobs. And then those jobs based on the cron expression can be scheduled to run on custom intervals. Once they're generated, you can see that the next run of the job would be on the job scheduler. These are also stored in both systems under a new tab in the file archive, under audit reports, and this is USPS. And just to show the same for USAS, we have a new audit report where the reports will be stored. So you'll have two entries um, in your reports right here. Are there any questions regarding those audit jobs? Another um, improvement was the account synchronization process between USPS and USAS. Previously, the process only checked the active and inactive flag on the expenditure account when synchronizing. And it never checked like the parent appropriation or cash account. So now that has been corrected and the process now checks the status of the appropriation cash accounts to ensure that the parent accounts are not active, that they don't have start and stop dates before, that, before it synchronizes. And other than that, 
other than those two items and a patch for a specific district, that is all the USAS recap was. And I'll turn it over if there's no questions for the inventory recap. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Can everyone hear me okay? All right, good, thank you. Okay, um, I'm going to cover um, the inventory, uh, what's taken place in March. Um, we had two releases, 111 and 112, and they were all bug uh, related um, fixes that we did. So I just wanna cover um, some of these here. I'm um, just going down the line here of what we have listed on the recap sheet. Um, the item grid <clears throat> export wasn't calculating the original life to date amount properly for items that have been deleted and re-added. So it's kind of a behind the scenes thing. Um, so this has been fixed. Um, so that one, you know, really can't see a whole lot of what's going on with that. Um, the next one, um, when using the system import, you know, we do have people that are starting to use that more often now. And, um, and we are running into um, some, you know, uh, buggy things and stuff like that. So we're trying to get those um, tweaked and, and fixed as soon as we can. Um, but uh, one that we noticed is when using the um, importing acquisitions or dispositions through the system import, it aired on the air adjustment. I'll pull up a, I have a spreadsheet here. It was airing on um, the air adjustment column, the authorized by if you were doing dispositions and the amount received if you were doing dispositions. If you were doing dispositions or acquisitions, it was just airing out on the air adjustment requiring you to put something in there. And these aren't required fields. So we changed that so that it doesn't require that anymore and produce an error on the import report. Um, so that was fixed. Um, the brief asset listing, if I go up to reports here and go down to the brief asset listing, uh, we made some updates um, in here. Um, this was corrected to allow to include disposition start and stop dates when generating the report. Um, so if I go down to the selection options here, there is now the disposition start and stop dates on here. It was on classic. Um, so that's um, so that was fixed to be added on here as well. Um, the item grid, I'm going to go back to transaction items. This is one that I'm with you guys. It was driving me crazy too. Um, the location, uh, we've um, been able to provide both the location number and the uh, location, um, uh, the category and the number. So now they're both displayed on here and you can query on those and stuff. So uh, that's been fixed. Um, the location worksheet, if I go, down to reports and location worksheet. It can now be run by a location number or a location category right here. So uh, that's been taken care of. Another big one that uh, we had some tickets on is being able to modify an item or the tag number on the item. So that was something that you were in, um, allowed to do in classic and um, it was giving an error before. So they can now modify the tag number. It doesn't matter if it's been out there for 10 years or, or if it was just created. They do have the ability to modify that. Um, one other thing that was noticed on the gap reports. So I'm just gonna go up to reports, gap report, and I'll just pick on um, the fixed asset by source is that the entity IDs and um, the include and exclude weren't working properly. Um, so we fixed that as well. So if you need you know, to exclude something, maybe you have an entity ID called no gap or something like that, it should exclude those properly now. Uh, we did have some other gap report um, bugs. One was regarding the fixed asset by source. Um, it was corrected to handle blank acquisition dates. Um, what was happening is those were being excluded from the report and it wasn't caught and it was causing balancing issues when you were trying to balance it back to classic. So that was fixed. 
The gap, all gap reports were updated too to include items with blank fund types. So that was fixed. And on the schedule of change and depreciation, um, we had a couple of um, things that were corrected on those reports. The continuing items column that's shown on that report um, was corrected to exclude any current year depreciation amounts. Um, so that was um, something that was incorrectly reported. The totals, you know, on those rows and stuff equaled out, but it just wasn't getting reported on the right line. So we made sure that that's been fixed. Um, the percentage of cost value um, on that uh, is now limited to six decimal places past the decimal point. So um, we made that change so that it matches back um, to what it was a classic. And on the schedule of changed and fixed assets, which is the classic, you know, the, the replacement for the classic 103, we made some changes in there as well. Um, the include transfer amounts for blank fund, um, fund and, ash, and asset classes. Um, those weren't being included before, so we made sure that those were included. And we removed adjustment amounts from being included in the acquisition. They were showing up in the acquisition column and not in the proper column. So again, the totals were matching, but within those different amounts, they were on the wrong column. So uh, we got that fixed as well. And um, so that covers you know, what we had in um, inventory in March. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, well, um, if not, we appreciate you guys taking the time um, to uh, go over the recap um, in March with us, and um, you guys have a great weekend, and we'll see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.